Is it working? Yeah. They told me I stepped on the dot that it starts, so it's like there we go. My company is Content Design Group. We're a multidisciplinary firm specializing in residential design as well as residential and commercial construction. Content Design Group offers commercial and residential construction and design management. In addition to these services, we will soon be able to provide architectural and interior design services. Um, born and raised in Jacksonville, um, and decided to spend my adult life here. One of the things that is very close to my heart is historic preservation. Uh, we believe that our existing historic buildings should be preserved, reused, and enjoyed by all. And saying that, we also feel that infill and new construction in historic areas should be handled in a very specific way. The National Guidelines for Historic Preservation are stated in the Secretary of Interior Standards for Guidelines specifying addressing uh, addresses the formula for infill and new construction in designated areas. However, new construction is within, we feel that good taste as well as good design are imperative. New construction does not, and we feel very strongly that it should not try to copy history. Bad copies of historic buildings degrade the visual fabric of neighborhoods and areas where they are placed. I did that one. <laughs> the slide, this slide depicts what happens when historic architecture is copied without taking into effect proper scale and building practices um, that were used uh, when similar buildings constructed originally. The overall proportion of the sum are fine, but closer examination reveals a lack of knowledge of the porch being the column details. These tales are what gives the simple home its character. Now, this photo was taken in Atlanta, Georgia. It shows a modern home constructed in an old historic neighborhood. As you can see, although the home is modern, it fits in the surrounding and uses proper proportion and setbacks. Kind of looks like an SRG house, doesn't it? <laughs> Sorry. We believe that new construction of historic areas should look decidedly different than any of the period building and any of the period buildings in the area. The new design accentuation pays homage to the historic buildings. They are extremely expensive to build authentic historic copies due to high material cost as well as the scarcity of true artisans. This red home in this photo is called the Factor 10 House in Chicago, Illinois. It's a home won a competition for sustainable infill. Uh, you can see the home was built in a neighborhood with homes dating over 50 years old. Um, the F10 home fits in with proper scale and proportion while utilizing daylight harvesting. One of my favorite pictures. It's important to get, an inf uh, get infill right in order to increase city core density. People are recognizing the convenience um, to move to the urban core. People are tired of long commutes and living in cookie cutter style homes. Busy lives and high gas prices will help drive people back to the inner city. This is a rendering of a case study that we did depicting sustainable workforce housing that can be constructed downtown or on the fringes. The design incorporates ground level garages that can be converted into office spaces for true live work experience, providing city zoning allows that. The idea is not only advantageous for the homeowner, but it's also good for the city tax rolls. Um, a move to the inner city for, um, for close proximity helps diminish our overall dependency on fossil fuels. Urban, uh, urban developments let people choose alternative means of transportation, including but not limited to bicycles, public transit, and let's not forget walking. That's the art walk guy over there. <laughs> Uh, recently, uh, recently we've seen a push towards what we're calling, for lack of a better term, rural urbanism. The photo is of a community about 40 miles south of Atlanta called Serenby, um, taking its cues from Seaside and Rosemary Beach before it. Serenby has also embraced sustainable building care uh, practices. The area centers around urban core with self-sustaining organic farms as part of their overall design. This is, uh, uh, in keeping my jumping around, I also feel that everyone deserves good design. With good design for low income workforce housing, it, this owners can afford to pay for common maintenance and high utility bills. This is actually a new design for some habitat for humanity housing. This room shows an idea for another case study we proposed for a local historic neighborhood here in town. The houses are dubbed modern bungalows. As you can see, material scale and setbacks were all considered in design. These 10 homes were to meet all Florida green building guidelines as well as Energy Star, 
Water Star certification are also developed as workforce housing, which means low income. Size does matter. Whether you believe Al Gore or not, the fact of the matter is the U.S. is one of the most wasteful countries in the world. Our homes have gotten bigger and our families have gotten smaller. The average size of a home in the U.S. is now pushing 2,500 square feet. Uh, I heard a statistic the other day in the National Ge Geographic Channel. Uh, the show stated the average size of a home in Japan is 500 square feet. The average size of a home in Europe is about 1,500 square feet. And as stated in the previous slide, the U.S. is close to 2,500 square feet. The photo to the right is a footprint of 350 square feet. Uh, we can't do a presentation on design and building and architecture without mentioning prefab. The prefab picture shows the LV home by Rizzio Ramiro. A prefab offers speed of construction and factory built uh, quality control. Once factories are developed, the economy of scale will bring pricing down. And these are some details. Good design covers many, many different details. Uh, we, be we believe everybody de deserves good design. It's not the cost of the product, it's the way the product is displayed. Um, we make every effort to address the details of every project we do. This is kind of the first of a shameless plug. In 2005, we started a group called FICOMOM, First Coast Modern. Um, it's a place for like-minded um, people to discuss all things modern. We're currently gearing up for some fall meetings. You can go to www.contentdg.com and send an email if you'd like more information on that. There's a, uh, and we'll reply. And this is our blog, another shameless promotion, but sorry about that. Um, but we just kind of, so, so we kind of, anything we like, we listen to, we hear, um, we're watching, we're reading, we put it up there. Um, this is a plug for Sean, he's the next speaker. So I um, thought we'd help him out. Thank you. Any questions?